Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Lucid in another game of Dominions 4 and the Garden of Good and Evil, and I am playing M.A. Airmore. So we'll hop into turn 21. Turn 21, I have a message from Machaka. For eventual subs, uh, I have an Awake Great Mother, Dominion 7, 2E, 9N, and then um, he gives his scales. Machaka had asked for a sub. He said he has too much going on. Uh, and so the group kind of reprimanded him a little bit, but we're going to try to find a sub for him. If you're playing a, a multiplayer Dominions game, most games take about two months, and it's one turn a day for two months. If there's something that comes up, we can always, like, everybody is totally cool with extending turns out, even for a few days. Um, but, you know, you need to think about it. It's like a 30 commitment a day, 30 minute commitment a day for about a month. Uh, but it's cool. We'll find a sub for this guy. Um, Asphodel, I had suggested that he attack Bandar Log. And that's because I'm using all of Bandar Log's forces, and Asphodel is, you know, obviously my disciple. So, Asphodel says, Of course we may be dead, but that doesn't mean we have lost our honor. I intend to watch with glee uh, your battles with the monkeys. So he's scouting me. That's nice. Um... And then finally a message from Ryla. I had vanquished him and sent him a kind of uh, gloating message from the god of death. And he says, shame on the one that gives up. You know what they say, you die when you give up. Speaking of your predicament, uh, if you really wish hard and maybe use some of your nature magics, we are certain that your deathness can be cured and you can be a real boy again. So I guess that's a Pinocchio reference. However, there will be no curing me. In fact, the world needs to be cured. So, on with our mission. Uh, let's look at the battles. Oh, we have an Archbishop too. That's good. So battles, uh, take back a force from Ryla. So this looks good because I took this back and I killed the PD. Great. It's actually kind of a loss, right? Because um, I wasted a big army turn and an Archbishop turn. That's why it's good to have a mix of big and small armies. Um, and even if I just had another commander following this guy around, I could have made my Archbishop um, reanimate Lictors and then this army could have gone. Um, here we have a battle against Bandarlog. We'll watch this one. If you remember last turn, they had taken my fort, and I had to retreat my army off their fort. This turn, I was able to redeploy a full army with the same leader um, way out to take this. Combat. So he thought this would be an easy fight against PD, so he sent a small army. Um, however, as he is soon to find out, it is not. Alright, look at those javelins, just wrecking those little tigers. And I think we're going to get a big bite out of all these guys. And here come my horsemen. And I think they're not going to route this turn yet, which is perfect. Because we have one more turn, I'm going to get on this thing. So we got about everybody. That was really good. Um... This is Agartha taking uh, a province from me. This is uh, when I tried to do my undead expansion in the water. It did not actually go as planned, which is unfortunate. I thought this would be uh, kind of an easy win. A little win, but an easy little win. Here we have a uh, large battle with Nazca, which you can see I absolutely crush him. This is actually a really uh, important battle, so let's go here. So, I had expected... Um, if you remember, I had an army in this province and an army in this province last turn, and there were two big armies. And he had, um, I believe it was a big army here. Or no, he had an army here. I can't remember. He had, an, he had one army here, and then he has his fort here. I think his other army was here, actually. I'm, I, I can't remember. But what I was expecting is that his big army would move here, and his army from any armies he had in his other forts would move here with the expectation that my two big armies, one would move here and one would move here. And if he moved all of his forces onto one of my big armies, his biggest army would probably kill one of my big armies. What I did instead, which was somewhat unpredictable, was instead of dividing and conquering and taking back both provinces, I moved all my troops into one province. Right. So we'll watch this battle. So this, uh, I think it's towards the end of year two. 
and this is a really good year two army. Um, the ghouls are not really here for any battle purposes. I have them on guard commander, and that's just because I'm picking them up as I go along to provinces so that they don't die when there's some kind of raiding. Um, I don't pick up Solus because I want the Solus to maybe help with the raid, but ghouls are, are far too important to lose in a raid. So here we go. You can see some Solus I did pick up and I put them out in front as banishment pictures. And the Nazcan armies are about to jump in. And here they go. Now you're about to see him do another round of banishment. We'll see if my blood vengeance works. Okay, you can see the blood vengeance working there. I think I killed one of them. I think there was a guy here that just died when he cast Dust to Dust. There was another guy, I believe here, that died when he cast Dust to Dust. There were two of them. Because you can see these... Well, I'm not sure. It's hard to say. Oh, I think these guys have Twist Fade on. Let's take a look. Oh, what is the Bless? Alright, so their Bless is... No, it's a weak Bless. They don't have Twist Fade. I'm wondering why they didn't kill him. But, as you can see, they're about their troops are about to come in. These gold ones are the ones that do huge amounts of damage to the undead they did. And they, they're in a guard commander formation. Um, so it's really a waste, especially if these guys, the sun guards, because they do so much damage. Um, I probably would have, if I were him, I would put the sun guards on attack cavalry and have them just jump in there. So a lot of them retreat, the sun guards don't. And I kill the, almost the rest of them. Hey everyone, welcome back. Sorry, I had uh, somebody come up and beg from the door. And that's uh, an unfortunate part about living in the hood. Okay, so you can see I won that one pretty clearly. Um, they were really relying on, on doing a lot more in Banishment Spam and Mage Spamming. If we look at the actual casualty report there, I lost 12 of my Knights, so the Banishment is pretty good against these guys, because they don't have as much HP. My Lictors, though, have a lot more HP, and they regenerate more, <clears throat> so they held up to the Banishment Spam a lot better. It doesn't look like I actually killed any of these guys which I'm a little confused about. I don't totally know how that works, because I saw a lot of the damage getting reflected, but then they didn't die. So, don't know what's going on there. Actually, let's watch that part real quick again. So if we look at it... about to start doing the banishment spam. And dust to dust, whatever. I think that did kill some of them. See, I felt like they killed some of them. What's happening here? It's like they're not dying. It's really boring. I'm just looking to see if. Uh... Yeah, it doesn't look like it's really working. I really expected more than mages to die there. Um with the Blood Vengeance, but we can see it didn't really happen. Not sure what happened there. Okay. Uh, Bandar Log attacked me also here. And that's a freebie. I didn't have anything there defending it. So, all looks good here. I'm going to take this back. 
Ermor was just, or Agartha was just being a putz. We're also going to attack here. Let's look at the moves. We're going to attack here with this big army. Uh, well, not big. It's a medium army. Uh, their pretender was around here a turn ago. I don't know if he went to site search or whatnot. But uh, moving in here to attack. We got troops in a line formation with my elites kind of scattered around. I don't know if this is really good Lictor placement. I probably should put them somewhere else. Uh, what else? We've got this small army running across here to take this province back. Should be easy. Um, what do we have here? We're trying to get the... I, I want a bracer of protection from that fight. Somebody had that on them. That'll be useful, um, especially when I get my mummy from this event. I can stick that on them. That'll be helpful. Um, so I need to get this out of here. I also... I lost enough troops where it's better to go ahead and condense into one army. And it's about time to get the ghouls out. So um, I'm thinking about how to get the ghouls out. I'll probably move them here and then have them... Uh, kill this province if these guys don't get it, or run them back through here to get them to the forts. Ghouls are meant to be in forts. Um, what else? This group, right here, is going to move down. Um, and the thought is... I might should have moved them here. Probably is better that way next turn I could attack with both these armies here. Um, but we'll see. I moved them down here. Um, should be okay. Making another uh, archbishop here, and you can see I've got a lot of gems. I actually finished, or I'm going to finish construction this turn, then I can give all these guys alquils. That's about it. We're searching here just in case we, uh, we're searching holy too in case there's a, an ancient temple or something like that. Uh, that's about it. Okay, see you guys next turn. Okay, next turn it is turn 22 with M.A. Airmore. So we have a message from Scalaria. Uh, I had sent Scalaria a message last turn saying that uh, we should potentially ally. And I said that in Dark Overlord, Overlord Voices. Uh, he says that he's my... I had told him, by the way, our alliance is kind of one-sided. He's going to be my disciple. And he said that we are your successors and the rightful heirs to the power of ancient Airmore. Uh, we have a hard, a hard time telling... Oh, we have heard tell that a great war is... We we have heard tell that a great war is raging between your puppets of bone and sorcery and the alliances of others, not least including the otherworldly abominations of Ryla. Would you see, uh, see fit to share news of this conflict? We're not currently enmeshed with a war of our own, or we are currently enmeshed in a war of our own against the savages of Machaka, but it should not be a difficult task. After them, Ryla is perhaps a great threat to the world. We should not <clears throat> wish to see gain strength. With that in mind, it is not impossible that if we defeat the Machakan soon enough, we could be persuaded to fall on the rear of the Rylan host, choking their underwater homes with our own undead legions. There's little love for your heathen pretender in Scalaria, but Rylan may be a common threat that could unite us if, uh, if briefly. So that's actually really good news. Um, Ryla is going to be one of my harder opponents right now, and really, if I had him out of it, uh, I would crush the other two. Um... But having him in it, 3 verse 1 is kind of hard. Nazca basically says uh, to everyone that they are looking for um, magic resistance items as well as um, cauldrons of broth and bags of wine, which are going to allow them to invade my territories, which right now they're really reluctant to do. So... That's okay. Um, let's look at the battles. We took this, which I think is just PD. Yep. He attacked here with the scout. Um, I failed here, which is actually interesting. I thought this would be an easy win. But he actually had a deep... No, he had hardly any PD. The fact that I lost to this with this many undead is really sad. I think what happens is I get my uh, commander sniped. Let's take a look. I think 
I had this guy on retreat. Yeah, that was really dumb. Um, so that was a user error. Anyway, that cost me like two income. Not a huge deal. So, we have this army here. My thought is, let's go ahead and get back on top of this fort. Every turn I'm on the fort, he can't recruit a mage. And his mages are a lot of what hurts. We had a big battle here. Um, you can see my army's about dead. So let's see what happened. So what do we have here? We have his pretender god. We have about 15 sacreds. Or more, 20 something sacreds. Um, and yeah, this is not super awesome. I'm gonna kind of skip through the next one. So it's going pretty well except for banishment. Banishment's really what hurts. It's this H4 uh, profit that's really good. So things seem to be going well. It looks like his pretenders are out of not casting any spells. That's extremely strange. I've never seen that before, and I didn't notice that the first time I saw it. Either way, um, he's incorrect. Because his troops are just far inferior to mine. The banishment really hurts, though. This is one of those things where if I had more uh, sacred troops, and I would chew through these guys faster, and I would somehow lift the turn, unfortunately. Um, and I would get less, less total banishments. So I had enough chaff, which kind of took heat off of my um, damage dealers. But, yeah, it was still kind of a problem. I also don't think I fortified this province at all. I probably should have put a few in here, and that way, if he had a single commander or something, he can't take it back. So, that was mostly successful. In terms of troop movement, We've got this guy moving out over here. The thought behind this is I'm moving this archbishop here. If you ever find this ancient temple, if you put an archbishop on it, he will create a normal temple. So that's like a free 400 gold. So I'm definitely going to do that. We're moving him here. Uh, what else do I have? I'm moving this guy, right, with all my elite troops up here. So he's going to uh, reinforce this mage, which is or this archbishop, which is walking down. Um, so that's the plan. I'm also, I really want to protect these two provinces right here, White Harbor and uh, Rigdon, because they give me 200 income, which is like half of my income. So protecting these two is actually really important. So I'm moving this back in case Nazca decides he's going to raid again. Um, he'll have a nasty surprise. But it looks like Nazca is not super intent on raiding, because he definitely could raid some this turn, but I think he saw that raiding is too costly for him. I, and then this group is going to take this province, because my expectation is this big Rylan army which moved in here, which you can see is four of the star spawn, uh, which are going to communion up with two of these guys, so they're all going to become H3. Um, this is going to be painful to kill. This is this costs Ryla a fair amount of money. These are all five gold, so I don't know. It's probably like a two thousand gold army, or something like that. Um, but it's going to be a little painful to kill, so we'll see how I do it. Um, but my what I do not expect is for Ryla to attack here, so I'm just going to grab a province. Really, I'm just trying to get money and build as many forts as I can early game. That's kind of the goal. Um, you can see zombie production going good. 100 zombies here, 240 here, 200 here, 100 here, 150 there, 150 here, right? Next fort's coming up here. I got a thousand population plus to turn into zombies. And uh, we got quite a few zombies here too. So uh, this is where my next fort's going to be because I'm going to get a free temple here too. So, I don't think I have enough to do it this turn. Uh, you can see I stopped recruiting indie priests, and that's because my income is so low that it's really going to... I need to get two or three more forts up. 
One of the things, if you go this quad bless build, you end up not taking a great Dominion score, and that Dominion is really, really important. So I started with Dominion 6. You can see I have it up to 7. Um, the number of temples... Um, the number of temples that you have is going to increase your Dominion, and I forget if it's every 4 or every 5 temples. I think it's every 5, but I'm not totally sure. Um, I'll check that, but... So I need to have either 10 or 8 temples uh, to raise it again. So at a minimum, I need two more temples. So I'm going to get one here in a second, and then I'll get another one here. That'll put me at eight. Um, I think it, maybe it's four. So I think this will bump up my max dominion to eight, which is really good. It's going to help me get my troop production up. And then if I do two more, maybe one here and one here, or one here and one here, uh, or one here, probably, get that thrown. Um, and here, I don't know. Ideally, I get four more before... Because I think eventually I'm going to kind of lose this War of Earth 3. Or I'm going to get pushed back in. And I don't want to get pushed back in with a Dominion score of 7 and only 6 forts. So we'll see how that happens. Um, but anyway, that's that. In terms of research, you can see I've switched to... Uh, to my, however you, you say that. Thaumaturgy, I think is how you say it. So... There's a few goals. One is I've got these get cool guys. Um, we can do gnome lore, right, and get earth searched in all my sites. We can do augury and get all the fire searched. And as soon as I get an air random, we can do auspex and search air in all my sites. Um, and gem income is super important as these guys. So I really need to get all the gem income I can. And uh, Thaumaturgy is going to help with that. Additionally, we have this bad boy at level 5. One of the best, lowest level globals in the game. 70 death gems, I can get that in a few turns. Um, really only my pretender can cast it, so I have to wait a little bit longer. Um, basically 12 more turns. So when 12 turns comes up, I'm going to do an assessment. If almost everybody I'm bordering is attacking me, I have nothing to lose by putting um, burden of time up except 70 death gems, which it will almost certainly be worth. So I will probably put it up when I get it. Uh, and I'm probably going to beeline straight for it. The way I'm thinking this will play out is over the next 12 turns, I'm going to lose probably the provinces over here. I'm going to try to keep my armies over here because I really want to hold on to these guys. Um, but I don't know. I feel like versus Ryla and Bandar Log over here, it's going to be hard. Um, so anyway, I'll probably be getting pushed back in here. And that's a that's the perfect time when I want to put Burden of Time up. Um, but it'll probably get dispelled. We'll see. It's going to be disruptive for them. And even if they dispel it, it'll take them four or five turns to do it. And by that time, I can put it up again. So we will see. Um... I'm not going to try to defend. You see I'm doing no defensive moves to protect this territory or this territory. Um, there's a big army here. It may attack. Hopefully it attacks right here. That's another reason I'm moving these guys in. Could also attack here. I really don't want them getting either of these provinces, so we'll see how that works. Um, yeah, and it's possible they could attack both of these. So I think that's it for this turn. Thanks everyone for watching, and... Uh, it's probably the end of this episode, so I've got two more turns to play out. I'm going to go ahead and do those right now, but uh, they'll be on another episode. See ya.